Hello and welcome back to McLaren Performance. Frank Lampard has been sacked by Everton and yeah, I think it's pretty easy to say that maybe Frank Lampard isn't a very good manager right now. I think there's a lot more going on there. I've got to say, when the news first came out, my first thought was to make a video and talk about players becoming managers, why that's not necessarily the best transition, why there's probably so much more to being a coach than just being a top player before. Of course, that's a good topic, but as I looked more into it, I think it's quite evident that the Everton haven't really been great for the past few seasons, and there's a lot of interesting things going on there behind the scenes. I mean, to put it nicely, Everton is it's a pretty interesting club, you know. Over the past few, I think, seven, six years, there's seven different managers. They've spent around about 700 million and that is not contributed at all uh, to performances. I'm pretty certain that their spending is up there with some of the top clubs, I think, throughout Europe, never mind just England. They are spending a lot of money, and I think they are really, just on the face of it, looking first off, a classic example of how money doesn't really bring you that success. Oh, especially in football with lots of people, there's lots more to just putting money into it. But that is just on the face of it. What is it that's really going wrong at Everton? Why is there so much change going on? Why is there no success happening there? Why does that starting eleven not look as good as the numbers behind it? Well, let's just take a little bit of a look at the history of the club so far and kind of try and decide what that is. So in around about 2016, that is when the owner, Mashiri, of Everton, he was the owner he had full control of what was going on. Before that, he was a, a shareholder in Arsenal, had a good relationship with them, uh, with Arsene Wenger. But as far as I'm aware, what can I tell from reading, he was someone who wanted to take over a club. He wanted to run a club, and that's kind of evident in things that are going on later in Everton. He wants to make decisions, he wants it to be his own. And just on initial impressions, I think it's easy to look at, you know, Mashiri, a big owner like that, to assume that maybe he's not a very nice person. But on all accounts, everything I've seen, Apparently, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> so there you go. Don't think that really makes him a, a great owner, though, because as well as being a really lovely guy, apparently, he also does have a short attention span and is very impulsive. And from probably that description, you can see where this is going in regards to where Everton are going wrong. But initially, really, things started off quite well. They seemed to be going in the right direction. He brought in Marco Silva, who at the time was a, a real up-and-coming manager. I believe the model that he based that on was, say, with Tottenham and Michel Pochettino, bringing a manager like that and developing alongside the manager, as Spurs did. But yeah, alongside a manager looking to long-term with a manager, he also brought in a technical director in Marcel Brands. He'd previously worked at PSV in a similar role for about eight years, so you imagine that's a pretty smart appointment, someone who's been at the club for a long time, or seems good. However, that really didn't translate into anything good at all. And we go back to that short attention span that being impulsive kind of contradicts the idea of having a long-term strategy giving other people roles and allowing them to take control and it's pretty evident looking at everything that's going on that uh, the owner didn't really allow that to happen he wants to have control over the things that are going on and all this is pretty evident when you look at articles and things like that where Marcel Brand has come out after having the job and saying that really he had no control over things that were going on. He was trying to take control over recruitment. He was try trying to set a wage structure in place, but it's, you know, literal stories where the owner would come in and say, I want to take this player and we're going to give him 170,000 a week. And it completely breaks that wage structure and completely breaks really what the technical director is trying to put in place. That kind of came to a bit of a boiling point where, you know, Marco Silva's under pressure a little bit. Marcel Brands wants to keep that manager in place because, of course, he has a long-term strategy in mind, being the technical director. However, that didn't happen, obviously, because Mashiri came in, uh, got rid of Marco Silva. And what you've seen since, really, is a lot of change in managers. Managerial appointments, really, that are coming from not a, a source that's, you know, uh, good. <laughs> really coming from agents and contacts and things like that. And that's probably why you see uh, different managerial appointments all the time. Just look at, say, Sean Dyche coming in now, which is completely different to, say, the manager of Frank Lampard and, say, even different from the manager before that and Rafa Benitez also. There's a lot of change happening all the time at Everton and it comes from the top. That's not to say, you know, Mashiri is a bad person. In, in terms of his, his what he wants... It seems pretty evident that he really wants to help Everton. He has no intention of making any money from it. There's no way he's making a profit. So he really does want to be that person who rebuilds Everton. The problem is, 
he's just going about it in all the wrong ways. And in fairness, uh, after last season, after they almost got relegated, how close they were to that, it looks like they have been trying to make changes. They have got a new technical director in, in Kevin Thelwell, someone who was at Wolves before, obviously done well with them, bringing them into the Premier League and bringing Frank Lampard as well, uh, having those two in place. Oh, and that could be a long-term solution, but uh, it's pretty evident that's not really happened because Frank Lampard's left now, and so he should really because of the run that he's having, but also it's hard to work, I imagine, in that environment as well. And that's kind of where Everton are now, uh, over the past seven years or so, chopping and changing so much. They've not developed at all over that time. Really, they've just gone backwards. And the problem is, that's a real big contrast to other clubs that are performing incredibly well. Look at Brighton, look at Brentford. Uh, with budgets not as big, definitely not spending as much money, but are succeeding massively in what they're doing. There's an interesting article uh, from Training Ground Guru. I think I'll leave a link to it. The appointments behind the scenes, you know, when a manager comes in, they might bring in an assistant, they might have coaches, S&C, physio, whatever. They have a team of people around them. And something that Brentford do really well, I imagine Brighton do also, they build a structure around a manager. And I believe, I've talked about this a little bit before, I believe the future of football really is heading that way. If you look at a club like Brighton, and as I mentioned before, their appointment of De Zerbe, they really had a structure in place already, a way of playing kind of developed from Graham Potter, but they had that way of playing, that philosophy, the, the tactics and everything really of what the club was. They had that nailed down and the people there to implement it. All they needed was a manager. So when uh, Graham Potter goes, they find the perfect fit for that in De Zerbe. Not a big name, not an appointment that Everton would make because they go for a Frank Lampard or a Benitez or whatever, but a name uh, from the data that shows that he'll fit perfectly into the way they want to play. He already almost plays that way of playing and has been successful in doing it, uh, developing young players, not spending a lot of money. That fits Brighton perfectly. And they've changed the manager and hardly anything has changed about the way they are performing. Clubs like Brentford as well have done the same. You know, they've picked managers, coaches, everything based on a way of playing. And those managers and people have stayed in for a very long time. Their manager has been there for a few years. Their technical director has been there for a few years. A lot of people have been there for a long time. And you've seen them develop year on year, season on season. And they've got to the point where they are now. Contrast that with Everton. Uh, and that's completely different. Again, credit to that Training Ground Guru article because it's, it's really interesting to look at. And I've got it written down because it's quite a lot. They've had seven managers... Uh, in the past six or seven years. That's three sporting directors, eight heads of performance, three heads of medical, and three academy managers uh, within that time. By comparison, Liverpool, obviously very successful, on a somewhat limited budget as well. One manager, obviously, uh, two sporting directors, one academy manager, and two head physios. And that probably tells the entire story, really. It's that consistency and structure is what has made a club so good and it is what is absolutely killing Everton at the moment. I talked about Manchester United on the last episode and, and what Eric Ten Hag has really brought to Manchester United. Yes, he's brought tactics and, and you know, a good coach in him that he's brought, but he's brought uh, consistency. He's brought a structure, a way of doing things, rules, standards, things that you can be consistent in and that will, it will serve Manchester United really well in the future as they develop. But, What's so important, I think, is that structure and your discipline, your values, but also the roles that people have and who does what. When Mashiri is asked if they're going to sack Frank Lampard or not, you know, he says it's not in his control, it's not his decision, which is absolutely baffling. I mean, it either is or it isn't, but it looks pretty evident from the past few years that he is the one making the decisions. The point is, looking from the outside, uh, probably from the inside as well, who is making the decisions? Nobody knows who is making the decisions. What is your job? If I'm appointed technical director of Everton, what am I doing? And if I'm doing it, I don't want Mashiri telling me I'm supposed to be doing something else and then trying to do my job for me. And why it's interesting to talk about this also is because I think doing that and the way Everton are running at the moment, I think you could probably get away with that a few years ago, but it seems like that's changing massively at the moment. It seems to be the, the development, really, the, the role of the technical director. And while it seems a bit different in lots of different clubs, they're not entirely sure what to do with it yet, it's pretty evident that it will play a big part in the future. Where you've got Brighton and Brentford, and they rely so heavily on data because they have two owners that 
just understand that stuff so well. Really, probably the heads of it, the geniuses behind all of that, they run the club entirely, so it works fantastically well. I don't think that would be the future either. You know, I think owners like Mashiri say would hire technical directors who really understood that side of things, who could probably run a data analytics department, and that would fuel entirely uh, their recruitment of player, of manager. From the foundation of that technical director, probably having a massive understanding of football these days, probably having all their coaching badges, whatever. Similar very to Dan Ashworth at Newcastle now, who, yes, Eddie Howe is definitely responsible for the short-term success of the team, but ultimately development that Newcastle are going to have over the next five, ten years, that's all going to be down to Dan Ashworth. And that comes from a place of really understanding football, but also really understanding the organisation of a club and getting everybody to do their job and getting people to know what their job is and just executing a plan and a vision for the next five, ten years. And like the thing with Mashiri, you know, he really cares about the club. He's putting a lot of money in. The problem is, and I think this is the most simple way to put it, their problem is they're putting manager first. They go, there's the manager, right, we'll build something around that. And that's absolutely, I think, how I used to work a few years ago. I think when my dad was a manager, you know, he'd go into a club and then they'd try and get the players that he wanted or he'd be in charge of the recruitment and try and build a team as quickly as he could really before he got sacked. That's kind of how it worked. But I think that's changing a lot now, whereby in clubs like Brighton, like Brentford, like Newcastle to an extent as well, the vision comes first, the way of playing comes first, the tactics come first, everything's built and then the manager comes in. It's a vision then manager, not manager, who then develops that vision. It's absolutely the future of football. Like, there's no denying it. It's it's so evident, especially the clubs that succeed. That's what they're doing. And with that, I hope that there'll be kind of a greater understanding of psychology in football, but specifically kind of organisational psychology. And that's where Everton are going wrong, evidently quite a lot, is that organisationally things aren't set. I talked about it last episode. It is a communication ideas of hierarchy and having good leadership of having that psychological safety of having set roles really as well <laughs> set roles and people knowing what they're doing and that being clear and defined all these things you know psychological and, and somewhat obvious but without them without that foundation you fall and you fail quite a lot so i would like to think along with uh, this technical director role that will most likely have more prominence in the future along with the data that is utilised as well to make things smarter, to make decision making so much better. I would hope that that awareness of how psychology and organisational psychology interaction that people have with each other, how much of an impact that has as well. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Everton really. Probably not ran very well at all. <laughs> Maybe the worst, possibly, I don't know. But it didn't seem to be going great. It didn't seem to be getting much better either. So yeah, thank you for watching and listening. What are your thoughts? on Everton and everything happening there leave a like if you could and subscribe and leave a review let me know your thoughts that's fantastic I'll see you again next week